This is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this granny tears scarf. And this is an older tutorial uh, that I had done uh, several years back and I went to share it actually and I didn't like the pattern. It wasn't uh, as clear as I would have made it now and also the sides weren't perfectly even like I would have liked. So now given that I have a bit more experience, I redesigned the pattern just a little bit and I wanted to go ahead and revise the tutorial to redo it in HD. So this is that tutorial. And you can see I also made it in this kind of yarn where it doesn't change colors so fast, which gives it a nice you know striped pattern so if you want to get yarn that doesn't change colors so fast that's good and then this is also one that is even longer to change colors and this yarn here is uh, Elise Baltic design um, but you can use any kind of uh, regular pattern or just solid colors would also be good um, this is very simple. I would say this is definitely a easy pattern, if not beginner. It's just basically um, like clusters. So what you're going to need for this pattern is a five millimeter hook and some washed weight yarn, which is four ply for the U.S., ten ply for Australia. And this stitch is worked. Let's see if I wrote that. Oh, in multiples of three plus two. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be using a bit thicker yarn just so you can see the stitch really well. So I created my slip knot just a little bit further down so I have a tail that I can hide in later or you can add fringe later and just add it into the fringe. And I went ahead and chained in sets of three until I had 21 stitches and then I did my plus two which gives me a total of 23 stitches. And you want to make sure that you don't chain tightly, but do it kind of loosely. Not real loose, but just not tight. So once you have your width of your scarf, and this one, by the way, if you want to know what size this was, this was 14 centimeters or five and a half inches wide. And I recommend getting two skeins as well, because unless you want a short scarf because um, you definitely want to have it. I like to usually make it to where it comes over my shoulder and down the front of my uh, torso and right to where my hips begin. So to get about that length, you definitely need at least two skeins. Okay, once you have your chain and you're ready to begin, what you want to do is yarn over and then count three chains down from your, your loop. So one, two, three, and then this third chain, you want to insert your hook and pull up a loop. Now you have three loops on your hook. Then you want to yarn over and only pull through two of the loops on your hook. Then you want to repeat by yarning over, going into the next stitch and pulling up a loop. Then again, you want to yarn over and only pull through two of the loops. And you'll do that one more time. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, then yarn over and only go through two loops, leaving you four loops on your hook. Then you want to yarn over and pull through all four loops. And whoops, I just lost my loop. You want to pull through all, all four loops, and then you want to chain two. One and two. And that's your first stitch. And then you want to repeat that. Yarn over, go in the very next stitch, and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through only two loops, and you'll repeat that again two more times. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and only pull through two loops. Then yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two of the loops. You've got four loops on your hook and you've worked now in three stitches total. 
then you want to yarn over and pull through all four of your loops and chain two to finish your stitch then you want to repeat that again to yarn over and go into your next stitch pull through only two then yarn over go into your next stitch pull through only two yarn over go into your next stitch and pull through only two four loops on your hook yarn over pull through all four loops and chain two and you'll want to repeat this for the rest of your row okay I'm just finishing the last stitch here of my row pulling through all four loops then you want to chain two as normal now to end the row this very last chain that you worked your third of your three stitches in this very last chain you want to go ahead and put a double crochet there as well so you'll actually be working two stitches within the same stitch one to end your cluster and then again to put your double crochet and that will end your row and it'll keep it even now at the end of your row you want to chain two and turn now you have these big spaces that you just created and these are what we're going to be working in from now on except for the very last stitch of the row so working in your first large space here you want to work that whole stitch that we did before these three of the cluster right inside there or what I'm calling the granny tears because that's what it looks like it looks like a granny square yet it's pulled together so it kind of looks like a tear to me so anyway you want to start off by yarning over going into that big space and pulling up a loop and then yarning over and pulling through only two and then again yarn over go back into that same big space and pull up a loop yarn over only pull through two then yarn over go back into that big space for the third and final time then yarn over pull through only two four loops on your hook you'll pull through all four and chain two and then you'll move over to your next large space and you'll repeat you'll start by yarning over going into that big space pulling up a loop and only pulling through two then you'll repeat that again Sorry, my yarn seems to want to run away from me here. So I just went into that space again and pulled up a loop. Yarn over, pull through only two. And then yarn over, go into it for the third and final time. Pull through only two, four loops on your hook. Pull through all four loops and chain two and you will repeat that in every space and then when you get to the end I'll show you how to end your row okay I've got to the end of my row I just pulled through all four of my loops then I'm gonna chain two like you always do and then you want to go to this chain two at the end remember at the very beginning chain where we had to skip two stitches and then start working in the third well it leaves us these this chain two at the at the beginning and it's backwards so if you need to turn it this way to find the top of the chain maybe easier that way but when you find it go ahead and put a double crochet in the top of that chain two and then you want to chain two and turn again you're going to be working in the big spaces that are in between the granny tears so again you'll yarn over go into this first big space and start working your first granny tear there and then you want to work it all the way until here and then I'll show you how to end your row okay I just finished the last big stitch of my row and now I have my last cluster and then this is the chain two from the previous row 
So when you get to this point and you've worked your last granny tier in your last big space, you want to find the top of the chain two and work a double crochet in the top of that chain two. And then you'll always want to chain two and turn. Now remember at the end of this next row, again, you're going to want to work in each space. And when you get done with the very last large stitch here, the end of this row will be a, I can't tell, it's either going to be a chain two or a double crochet. But whether you're working with a chain two or a double crochet, it doesn't matter. I think it'll actually only be chain two, either way. Um, you always work after your very last space, big space is worked. And you'll do a double, you'll chain two after the stitches always, and then you'll double crochet in the top of the chain two. And then you'll just repeat that over and over again, and you should have straight edges. And these big spaces here, the very first row that you did, you can add fringe using those. And I bet it would look really nice. And that's it. That's how you make the granny tear scarf. Thank you so very much for watching. And if you like this video, please don't forget to click like. Also, you can check me out on Facebook. Um, you can look up Facebook, Melodorous Creations, and you'll find me there. Or you can find the link to all my social, uh, all my social links in the description box below the video, as well as a link to the pattern with the pictures and everything you need. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please don't forget to do that. And Thanks so much for watching.